gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 299 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. Hit me. Give me some of that shit. What have we got? We've got the new ice pop flavor of Prime Energy Drink. Have you already drunk from this? Not from it, but I had some in a glass. <laughs> that doesn't make me feel very good. How can I trust you? What do you, you mean? Go, I brought you some Prime. I got your bottle for a taste test. This has been open. I had it this morning because I went to Woolies. I saw it. And you probably I, fucking spat in it. <laughs> I thought it was interesting, so I thought you should try it. Right. Okay. But you didn't think to get to get me my own bottle. You just no. Right. Sorry. See, this is this is this is how little Keelan's getting paid. Is is when he comes up with an idea for a podcast, we have to split it. <laughs> But you, what's up, what I find interesting is you you haven't had much, so it can't have been good. Well, because I had the first, I had a little bit of the glass. Yeah. And I was like, oh, Lewis has to try this. Right. Okay. I so, had strong opinions. So it, interesting that that you put it in a glass before you decided you were going to share it with me. <laughs> this is how you drink your energy drinks normally. You <laughs> pour them see, into a glass. I wanted to see what color it was. Okay. that's Now that, that I believe, because that sounds quite autistic. <laughs> Um, all right, I'm going to have a sip. Ice pop. What is that, though? Because the other ones are like grape and fucking... Blue. Oh, it stinks. Mm. It's pungent. It smells like petrol. <laughs> this is the thing about this, these American drinks. They're fucking poison. And you get any Australian or like English person to have one sip of Prime and they go, Ugh, this, is, this is bloody rotten. <laughs> this is bloody rotten. This is poison. But the average American is like, yeah, it tastes like my tap water. Uh, I'm gonna, <laughs> um, yeah, okay, it's cherry, lime, and blue raspberry flavor drink with sweeteners. With sweeteners. Serving suggestion, consume one bottle pre or post-workout. Consume no more than one bottle per day, concerning. Uh, we've got water, fruit juice from concentrate, 10% uh, coconut, food acid, acidity regulators, uh, sweeteners, and then a lot of things that I've never seen before in my life. Mm -hmm. um, all right, I'm having a sip. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, That's really good. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. That it, tastes like... Um, chemicals, but it tastes good. It's, you know what? Let me do another sip. Because whenever I have one of these American drinks, I'm like, that's awesome. And then I have the second sip, my body goes, no, nah, that's poison. Mm. Mm. It's less good. It's definitely, I couldn't have a bottle of this. This is yeah. like a sip. I had our sip and then. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. This has like, uh, it's, d it's dense. <laughs> Like that's yeah. I could, there's no fucking way I could drink this while I'm playing a sport or like mid workout. I could see it on a hot day after after a big run. Mm. And that's enough. That's enough for me. Yeah, I couldn't. Um. Yeah. Okay. I've changed my mind. That's foul. <laughs> that's it's so chemical. See, now he's drinking from the bottle. All right. I don't trust you. The cherry is a strange flavor. Yeah, it's... But the uh, aftertaste is great. Nah, the aftertaste is gross. Look, it's just... It's poison. That's what it is. Uh, it's episode 299 of the show. Uh, episode 300. <laughs> huge <plans>. milestone. <laughs> Something should be organized for this. Keelan, what have you got? Uh, well, when you said episode 300, I thought live stream. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yep. Uh, I see. I thought fifty episodes ago. I thought like giant live show. Maybe like a, maybe even a, a ticketed live stream where uh, we load up just the most foul guidelines violating TikToks and and videos that we've ever seen, and we play them. Like you, do you remember that uh, that video I showed you of that guy shitting into his own hand and then eating it, <laughs> rubbing it all over his face? You don't remember that one? No, I remember that one because I showed it to you and uh, and it and it almost made you vomit in the car. And I think and I was I had that video and I thought it was so funny, but I think we'd only been working together for a little bit at that time, and I was like, "Is this appropriate to see?" See now, Rosie never got to see that one. <laughs> I do remember that. Yeah, and uh, and and that was really that was really good. But I could never play that on here, so I thought a ticketed live stream. Now that's a 
Now, is that a... I don't know if that's a good sell, though. Hey, uh, pay, give me 15 bucks to tune into a live stream. I have a, I've got a video of a, of a man eating his own shit, rubbing it all over his face. <laughs> uh, and what's and and the most shocking thing about that video was the size of his penis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we, but I'm very sick, so that's not going to happen. Well, what if we do? We do our live stream next Sunday, yeah. And Uncle Whitey flies up for it. He <laughs> pays for it himself, yeah. And then he comes here and he helps us do the live stream because the one we did in Tassie for two fifty was good, but there were technical issues. What what issue was there? I don't remember. Me neither. But I'm sure there was. Probably. Um, yeah. um, so look, that might be worth it. We'll see how I feel because I'm I'm a very sick man uh, at the moment. But here's the thing. You should call Uncle Whitey, see if he'll do it for free. Yeah, okay. How about I'll call Uncle Whitey and charge him for the experience <laughs> and say, mate, we've got a big opportunity for you. Uh, 300 episodes have happened and you'll be the first person to see it <laughs> because we'll put the, the stream on a three-second delay. <laughs> so you'll be, the, you'll be experiencing it in real time before anyone else. Um, so, uh, I'm very sick and, uh, it's, it's become unbearable. So I went to the doctor, another fucking spe a sleep specialist. Uh, and, uh, and, and I go, I feel like I'm like, I'm like, I'm dead at 2 PM. I start falling asleep. I fall asleep, uh, doing anything. Uh, what can we do? And, uh, and he goes, uh, I say, I'm, he goes, are you using your CPAP machine? I said, I'm using it every day. And he goes, oh, yes, I can tell by, the, by your skin. Because <laughs> I've, I've got a triangle shaped uh, mask, uh, like red, red skin on my face. See, I can't even speak and formulate sentences anymore. Um, but he's prescribed me uh, a wakefulness agent called uh, Armadaphanil. And uh, I looked it up and. Imagine Adderall that lasts 12 hours. That's what I've been given. And I looked it up because uh, here's what you want to do. When you're trying a new medicine, what you want to do is you want to look it up from, from two different perspectives. The first perspective is from uh, the medical perspective. Like what do doctors think? Read a few studies on it. Uh, and what do uh, patients who've taken this medicine, what do they feel about it? And that's good, but I, in my view, that's only half of your research done. The other half of the research has to be, uh, are seventeen-year-olds taking it for fun? <laughs> <laughs> like, are seventeen-year-olds and nineteen-year-olds in uni doing exams taking it for fun? And they're taking a lot of modafinil. I've found. I searched. I searched it on two platforms. I searched it on a place where I look at studies, medical studies, and then I looked at it on TikTok. And you know what they're calling it on TikTok? The Limitless drug. You know that movie Limitless? Oh, yeah. They're saying that Limitless was written about modafinil. And all these kids are taking it to smash their exams and to be able to study for 16 hours straight without sleeping. So what it does is it's not like it's not like cocaine or speed where it amps you up. It it kind of just deletes the feeling of tiredness. So it doesn't make you more like amped up and your heart racing or anything. It just kind of gets rid of the signal that you should sleep is kind of the idea. So it, it wakes you up without hyping you up, which is cool. But the side effects of that can be just sitting there for 16 hours playing Scrabble and not getting bored. So I'm going to start taking it tomorrow morning and if I start uploading, it's modafinil. But if every single video I make is about 13th century fashion or some obscure <laughs> niche interest that I've never even been interested in before, that's also modafinil. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you buy it illegally? You used to be able to buy it online uh, and people would just ship it to you uh, in Australia and it wasn't, it was, wasn't technically illegal. Um, I think they actually invented it first as a performance enhancing drug. And then they were like, oh, well, how do we actually sell this? And then they did a few studies and it wakes you the fuck up. So, so it's prescribed for narcolepsy and sleep apnea only. And you can't get it for any, any, anything else. You'll, you'll get Adderall or Ritalin because we don't have Adderall in Australia. 
because Adderall's fucking crazy. Uh, but yeah, so I've got modafinil and uh, I think I'm just not going to sleep because I got it and I got home at like two or two and I was like, oh, I should take it. We thought, oh, let's take it for the podcast, but it's 3 p.m. right now. I thought if I take it now, I'm not going to go to sleep until 4 a.m. Mm. tomorrow. <laughs> like three days from now, I'll be like, oh, I'm getting a bit sleepy actually. <laughs> So I, I'm hoping that it that it works because the only thing that I've managed to I can kind of do one one thing a day, kinda. And today it's the podcast, and then when Keelan leaves, I'm going to go to bed. Um, and uh, yesterday I went to the gym, and that was that's all I did. Nice. It is good. I've I've decided that that as a sick person, I'm not going to make anything other than this podcast. And the only other thing I'm going to try to do is go to the gym. Because I need a, I need a, I need to go into this surgery the heaviest I can possibly be, because I won't be able to eat for months, and I'm now the heaviest that I've ever ever been in my life. I'm 85 kilos, which doesn't sound like a lot when I'm six foot eight, <laughs> but for me that's fucking heaps. But how much were you when you came out of surgery? 69. Yeah. Uh, well, a few nice. months after the surgery, because I couldn't eat, I I, I couldn't eat solid food at all for a, at least a month, maybe two months, mm. and then and then for six months after the surgery, with all the metal in my mouth, I hated eating in general because it was really difficult and painful. So I didn't. I ate as little as as possible, uh, and so I finished. I started this year, yeah, hovering around like sixty nine, seventy kilos, which is fucking crazy. Uh, but I'm now 85, which is sick. So I, I want to try and get to 90 before the before the surgery because I reckon I'll probably I'll probably le I'll probably lose 10, you know, after or maybe less. I don't know. We'll see. But basically, what I'm saying is I want to get so fucking huge that it's distracting on stage and and terrifying. I want to look like one of those fucking jacked kangaroos. Have you have you seen Hassan Piker? Yeah, he's huge. And anytime he's he massive. sits next to anyone normal, he he looks like a giant. Yeah, because on 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 camera on his streams and his clips and shit that I see, yeah, he just looks like a bloke. But then you see him next to any other streamer because I think he's like six four, and he looks like he's got to be at least a hundred kilos. It seems more than that. You reckon? He's huge. Yeah, he's, he's very big. His chest is massive. Yeah, he's he's a big boy. Um, you know why he's that big? It's because whenever he he does, because he does a lot of um, charity stuff and like political activism, whenever he goes to strikes, he actually eats other socialists. <laughs> he eats them. <laughs> because he, he's, he's like a big proponent of eat the rich, right, on his streams. <laughs> but in his personal life, Hassan Piker literally eats poor people. Mm. Because, and this is what he said to me in a, in a private DM. <laughs> He said that while they're definitely less tasty because they don't have any meat on their bones, they're starving, a lot of poor people are addicted to drugs. So if you eat like a homeless guy in LA who's been living in a tent for the last decade, you might get a little bit high <laughs> on fentanyl. But because the fentanyl has already half killed this homeless guy, it's kind of like half potent. So you just get the fun bit of fentanyl, but you're not going to overdose. <laughs> Like that fucking pathetic homeless person in a tent tuh, mm. is what Hassan Piker said to me. <laughs> and I don't necessarily agree with it, but I do think it's very funny. <laughs> um, right. So I, I went to, uh, speaking of lefties, I went to, to Dangerfield, uh, the clothing store. You know Dangerfield? Yeah, I love Dangerfield. When I was a kid, when I was like 14, Dangerfield sold exclusively punk rock and emo gear. That's what it was for. Mm. Now they sell like uh, hipster, like Gen Z TikTok outfits but and stuff for gay people mm. who are going to festivals. That's what they sell is like fishnets and fake leather strappy outfit things. Uh, and that's what they do, right? Very alternative clothing. Uh, I went there um, because my my girlfriend Jazz, she's Gen Z, in her head, uh, and w she was buying some clothes. And uh, normally every Dangerfield we go to, they do have some cool stuff. It's like every other clothing store, the layout. But this one, we went to the Fitzroy Dangerfields. So 
this is like the hipster hipster store, mm. right? And we went in there and it was everything in that danger field was was gender neutral. They had no nothing in the store was was arranged by gender. Yeah. Right? Which was so fucking annoying. Unbelievably fucking annoying as a customer. <laughs> Cuz I I'm a six foot eight man, all right? I'm not gonna fit in the fucking dress. I'm looking for clothes that are gonna fit me. I barely fit in fucking any men's clothing. You put a fucking mini skirt next to the jeans I'm looking at, I get confused and angry and upset. <laughs> all right? The fucking jeans, there's men's jeans that might maybe fit me next to fucking women's jeans that aren't long enough and the fucking hips are too wide for me. It's not unisex. They don't sell unisex clothing at Dangerfield. That particular store was like, ah, fuck categorizing clothes by gender. But the cut of all of the clothes was very categorized. <laughs> there were a lot of space for titties in some of those t-shirts and dresses. It annoyed me. It doesn't make any sense. If you're gonna have a gender neutral clothing store, great, cool. But the clothes themselves have to be made in a gender neutral way. Otherwise, you're just fucking putting skirts next to jackets and going, oh, it's progressive. No, it's disorganized and fuck, close your store. <laughs> it pissed me off so much. It made me so upset. And the fucking, you know, the store was being held hostage by the employees as well. <laughs> Like it was one of those places where da you, the CEO of Dangerfield isn't like, yeah, let's fucking jumble up all the clothes so we don't scare someone who's non-binary. They don't care about that. They're like, why, why isn't anything at Dangerfield Fitzroy selling? Why do people spend 50 minutes in the fucking store and leave with no items confused? What's going on down there? And six chicks with blue hair go, oh, we're actually unionizing. And we're like, we've already got a union. This isn't Starbucks in America. <laughs> <laughs> the mannequin in there, right? They had a they had a, a male mannequin. I presume, I assume the gender of the mannequin. All right, and uh, it was it was wearing uh, it was wearing like a mesh top, and someone from the store had drawn mastectomy scars on the male mannequin. <laughs> now I don't know about you, but I've never seen. <laughs> I've never seen a trans man that ripped. <laughs> right? I'm all, I'm all for gender affirming care, but I've never seen a trans man with collarbones and shoulders like that. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. I looked at the mannequin and I was like, oh, that's cool. They put tattoos on the mannequin. Oh my God. <laughs> What they should have done is they should have also drawn on some real fucked scars around the nipple to make it realistic. I would have told that joke if the ma if the mannequin had fake boobs. <laughs> That's what they do. They cut the nipple off and then they put it back on and they stitch it up like you're doing surgery on a pizza, a pepperoni pizza. <laughs> So we fucking spend 50 minutes in there. Jazz is just as confused as I am. She's going, I want a fucking dress. I'm like, yeah, it's next to the men's boots. She gets what she wants. And then, uh, and then I paid for it, which was very gender norm of me. Right. <laughs> and then as we leave, one of the, <laughs> one of the clerks, right. They go, have a good night, folks. And I was like, what, a, <laughs> what is this, America? Who the fuck says folks? I was like, oh, she's not using gendered language. Just in case she looked at me and my girlfriend. I was like, have a good night, guys. And I went, excuse me. There's only one fella in this relationship and it's not me. It's her, it's him. <laughs> and it just made me laugh. <laughs> Just thinking about the guy that owns that fucking Fitzroy Dangerfield just sitting there going, why won't they be normal and sell the fucking clothes? Everything in there is made by fucking nine-year-olds who are getting whipped anyway. But at least they're not fucking putting, it, putting it, the, the woman's dress in the women's section. Here's how, here's how what I think. 
I and look, I wear women's clothes all the time. Like literally, this fucking belt is a woman's belt from ASOS. I was I was fucking rocking a woman's crop unique clothes jacket. I do that shit all the time because let's be real, women's clothes frequently much cooler than men's. Like I'll say that I wear women's shit all the time, but it is so fucking annoying to try and find shit that fits when you don't know if it was made for a male body or a woman's body. It's difficult. When I go into Uniqlo and I go, I wanted a crop jacket, I know I'm not gonna find that shit in the men's section. I went looking in the women's section and I found what I wanted and I got a fucking 3XL. And it fit me, just. But if I was in a fucking unisex store and I'm looking for stuff and I don't know if these jeans are made for men or for women, I don't know what fucking size I am. You know, I pick my men's size in the women's jeans, I try them on, they don't fit, it's annoying. How about this? Categorize your fucking store at least by body size. <laughs> at least. Generally, this fucking flowy bit of clothing with two triangles where your chest go and spaghetti straps is generally for smaller body people that have big hips. And generally, this fucking three-piece suit and <laughs> with a bow tie is meant for bigger bodies. And then I'll be less confused when I walk in the store. I'll be more likely to buy something when I walk out. Have a good day, folks. What do you say when there's only one person? Because folks is great for multiple if you're, gender, if you're using gender neutral language, but you don't know my name. You just go have a good day. Pal. Pal. Pal's kind of male. Mm. That, that skews man to me. Have a good day. See, that's, but, but you could have said that to us as we walked out. The folks was and was like, <laughs> that's what annoys me about the fucking like it was so. I'm using gender neutral language. No, you added an unnecessary word. You don't say folks. You decided to because you saw a Twitter thread. Have a good day. Say that. It's all you need. Anyway, guys, what I would really like to see <laughs> is like is. Um, a male mannequin that has uh, that has like uh, like a man-made vagina on it. So it's instead of having the mastectomy scars, it's got a real fucked up pussy. <laughs> or you have like a mannequin that started off as a woman's mannequin. But it's got this horrific scar on its on its forearm, and then it has this this strange tentacle-looking penis <laughs> that barely functions. That'd be progressive. I would like to see that. That's how they do it. They take the skin from your forearm, and then they and then they then they they get like a Kransky sausage from the butcher, and they wrap the skin around that, and they plug it in. It doesn't. I. You know what? Here's here's what I think about the. <laughs> Here's what I think about the gender affirming care. Breast implants, love it. We're nailing it, right? Born biologically male, you want some breast implants? Go for it. We're fucking good at breast implants. Creating a pussy. <laughs> Complex. We're not there yet. I would hold off, you know? Like when they first came out with breast implants, you let a few go in for a few years, let those doctors figure it out. <laughs> if you're going in for a, for a hog <laughs> or a hole, I would, wait, I would wait five more years at least. Cause I've seen some of the results and I'm not, I'm not pleased. <laughs> I've heard there's a stench. <laughs> really? Well, oh. most, mostly with, okay, this is foul. This is more a ticketed live stream <laughs> chat. This is foul. Uh, it's horrible. The, <laughs> the, um, male to, uh, male to female mm. creating a penis easier. It's not perfect, but it's easier because you're adding, creating a pussy, you're subtracting, you're going in, mm -hmm. you're creating a wound. And sometimes oh. that wound connects with your bowel.
Oh. Yeah, it's not. We're not there yet. <laughs> is this what is this what people want from the podcast, guys? <laughs> we're look, learning. Good yeah, time. we're yeah, we're we're learning, and this is all this is all important. I hope you're enjoying the show, folks. <laughs> um, anyway, I saw a deaf couple at the at the, <laughs> at the, at the shopping center the other day. I saw a deaf couple at the shopping center, and uh, and. They they looked like they were very in love, which is lovely. You were there as well, Keelan. Yeah. And um and I said, Oh look at those guys, they're deaf <laughs> And they had no idea. Um but they were, no, they were ordering coffee and it was like it was it was a really lovely interaction of like the staff trying to work out what the deaf couple was saying because they that they couldn't they could they were using sign language to each other, but then they were doing the deaf thing of like, oh, like they don't they're trying their best, but they figured it out. I thought it was really wholesome and lovely and then and then i noticed that they were together like romantically as a couple and i just thought man think about the fucking farts going on in their house <laughs> like just the just letting it rip you know just the fucking the noise that would be emanating from <laughs> from that house every time either of them needed to fart they would fucking blast that shit like a foghorn and they the only thing they have to be concerned about is a smell you know <laughs> do you reckon it's easier because obviously right we have girlfriends so our prerogative is to fart away or silently you're just ripping them <laughs> you're just Always. you're just ripping too it's like you're fucking deaf our, and so is she my rule is just like not not when we're in bed like under the blanket yeah and uh not like if if she's laying on me or i'm laying on her not when our heads are near that part Right. Like laying down watching a movie, I mean. Yeah. That's they're my only rules. Otherwise, go for your life. Go for your life. Just rip just just rip them like you'd both deaf. Let it rip. That's impressive. See, I don't because it's really funny to you go. You know what? I've been with my girl for eleven years. You know what she said to me just last week? She goes, I've never heard you fart. Yeah. Well, I haven't heard you fart either, actually. How long have we known each other? Five years. Five Yeah? Yeah. I'm a stealthy tutor. <laughs> It happens, but you wouldn't know. Yeah. Do you reckon it's easier for you to know? Because I'm pick putting myself in the in the deaf couple. Do you reckon it's because because okay, this is more relatable to everyone, right? If you're in public, you have to fart, okay. <laughs> um, but you're outside, right? Mm. So you don't have to worry about smell, but you do have to worry about sound. <sighs> That's like the opposite of their problem. They don't have to worry about sound, but they do have to worry about smell. Do you think it's easier to know if you're going to make a sound or a smell? Sound. You reckon? Yeah. I reckon smells easier to know because you know you've eaten uh -huh. that day. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't ever thought about it like that. Honestly, this is this <laughs> this is how you don't get caught for eleven years. <laughs> I'm undefeated. Yeah, I I would say it's easy to work out sound. Yeah, probably because you can feel it coming. Mm. Um, Crop let, dusting at the shopping center is awesome. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that is that is good because you know what's good is I'm my ass is a lot higher than the average person's <laughs> ass because my legs are so long. So if you really want to fucking just nuke a toddler, it's easy ass. <laughs> You ever get caught in the shower just getting gas chambered by yourself? <laughs> you ever wonder about that? Why does it smell worse when you're in the shower? Yeah. Is it is it just mingle with the steam and hang around? I think that's it. Yeah. That's horrific. Um, <laughs> um, guys, support the show on Patreon if you want more of this highbrow uh, discussions uh, and gender politics. Um, the got some great news. Um, for you guys, I saw this news story that really uh, made me feel uh, good. I'm just pulling it up now. Um, let's have a look here. This every now and then, you know, there's a lot of doom and gloom, especially since COVID. I feel like the news is really like just really um, grabbed a hold of bad news even more than what they were before. Um, but this is something that really uh, made me kind of smile. Um, and uh, it was the the RBA governor saying that that housing prices were going to increase and rental prices were going to increase and the population was going to increase 2%, which was going to result in a big housing crisis because things are going to get more expensive. There's also going to be much more competition because there's going to be more people. And also immigration is being... Uh, 
continued. So that's going to make housing a bigger problem as well. But the RBA governor, who's the person in charge of all of the interest rates, he said that the solution to this for all these people who are looking for houses is to just get a roommate. So problem solved. If you if you have been struggling because you're poor and a loser, unlike the RBA governor, all right, you should fucking, you should problem solve, all right? Let's say you're a family of six, all right? Mum lost her job because she couldn't handle it as a nurse, right? Because she kept getting spat on by people who wanted her help. So she quit being a nurse like a fucking quitter, right? And, and dad got long COVID. Boo-hoo. Yeah. Have a sook. All right. Or was it long COVID or was he just ripping up asbestos for 20 years as a carpenter? <laughs> okay. it's You know what it is? It's neither. It's being a sook. All right. <laughs> and now, right, you're back on your feet. You've both got new jobs. But because you had to sell your home, now you have to get back into the rental market. All right. For you and your four kids. All right. How about instead of fucking complaining about not being able to afford a home, on two full-time wages, like a bunch of sorks, you just get a bunch of roommates to hang out with your kids. <clears throat> Join the share house. If you're a family of six, right? You got four kids under 15, just get into a share house in Fitzroy. Get those kids a job at Dangerfield and suck it up, all right? Is that really their fucking suggestion of all these people? Oh, oh, get a roommate. You can't get a fucking roommate. It's impossible. People can't afford the share house rent. Mm. You know, young couples who want to start families, they can't afford a house to start a family. They're fucked. I managed to buy a house, right? Do you know how fucking difficult it has been for me to not lose the house? My mortgage was fucking... Something like $2,400 when I first bought the house. Something like that, which was like a little bit more expensive than the rent that I was paying. So it was like, it was, it was a lot more than the rent I was paying, but the, the place was bigger and it was mine. So I'm like, this makes sense. Now my fucking mortgage payment is $3,700 a month. I can't afford that shit, right? And I'm fucking... I got in, right? So I have it so I can do things like apply for hardship or try to make more money and all that kind of bullshit. This house today, if I had the same exact amount of money in my bank account and I wasn't sick, I couldn't buy this. Couldn't afford it. Because the, the property value has gone up like so much. It's fucking impossible. And it's crazy to think that if I had three of these, I would just be sitting back going like this, just printing money, doing fuck all. It's an insane bullshit system, you know? <clears throat> and it is this thing of like, once you own a house, like the fucking rules are broken and you're you're almost like, I'm struggling with this, but it's like so much easier than anyone else. Because if I'm struggling to pay my mortgage one month, I can go to the bank, hey, can I pay less this month? And it's likely that they'll say yes. If I go, hey, I'm struggling to pay my rent this month, it's likely they'll say, get the fuck out of my house. You're evicted. Yeah. You're one day late on rent because the BPAY didn't go through. Yeah. And they send you an arrears message. Yes. <laughs> yes. They also don't, <clears throat> a lot of rentals don't want families. When I was doing the house hunt at the start of the really, year. Really? That's interesting. They were asking like, <coughs> we went into the house we're in currently. We were in just walking around having a look and the agent was like, because uh, we've been, my Phoebe and I have been together for six years. They mm. were like, are you going to start a family? We we're like, no, not yet. Not for, not for another 10 years, maybe. And she goes, oh, good. Yeah, the owner doesn't want families with kids. Why is that? Is that because Phoebe would stop working and then you would struggle to pay rent? <laughs> maybe, actually. That's probably a good point. I guess. That's like, that's like uh, people not hiring women of ch childbearing age who are in relationships because they're worried about them taking maternity leave. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. It's, I don't know. I think, I don't know what the fuck they, they're expecting young people especially to do when it comes to like housing in, in Australia, it's fucking mental. And they're letting all of these, like uh, all, all of these uh, 
foreign uh, millionaires and billionaires like buy up all the homes and go, Whoa, why can't poor people get a house? And then they're like, oh, why don't you just move regionally? And meanwhile, regional towns barely have tap water. <laughs> We're we're only going to develop the inner cities to like appease Chinese children of Chinese billionaires, and then go. Oh, why don't you want to live regionally? <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Um, but anyway, I, as as a homeowner, I'm I am obligated to say it's your fault for being poor. You know. <laughs> yeah. Like when I bought my house, I got a I got a few things. I got the deed. I got like council rates and things I never had to pay pay before. I uh, you know like you got to pay for the council rates so they pick up your bins and all that kind of stuff. And I got an exclusive membership to the Liberal Party. And now I and now I go and to all their parties. Yeah. And we, well, this is actually, this is you, you fucking renters probably wouldn't know about this, but us homeowners, right, us normal people, are not like you freaks, uh, we actually all have a group chat. <laughs> and and I'll, I'll let you in a secret. We are doing it on purpose. Yeah, that is true. Is we actually all... Just a couple of days ago, we all collectively decided to raise the rent because we thought it was funny. And you know what? It is. And another a really good prank as well is, uh, <clears throat> you know, Airbnb was just like invented as a prank to just like make poor people cry, to, to try and make rents higher. Like what we did, we were like, oh, what if we take all these perfectly good homes and that have young families in them and we evict those young families and then we turn it into places where people can come and and fuck for one night and then for five nights they sit empty mm. but for, for friday and saturday night they're full and you make about 30 dollars more than you would on rent <laughs> <laughs> and that's just like a little prank that us homeowners do on you pause um uncle whitey owns that group chat he does he yeah. leads it. he's a property mogul um <laughs> You ever see something that makes you hate your fucking mate? I, <laughs> he posted something that really made me just hate him. Yeah. yeah every now and then your, your friend will post something and you go, do I like you? Like, is this the type of person I'm friends with? Like, it makes you judge yourself for being friends with them. Um, the, the budget, the Australian budget. <laughs> you saw this as well? Disgusting. Right? We've got a friend, Whitey. He's got a lot of money, right? Uh, he owns a child trafficking ring. <laughs> And uh, him on his Instagram story, watching the, the live stream of the budget on, on, uh, on ABC News and uh, on his coffee table was a charcuterie board. He had cheese and meats and biscuits. And I saw that and I wanted, and I wanted to fucking chop the cunt's head off. I was like, eat the rich. But then I remembered I was in his group chat, so I thought not. Every time I see him, I saw him last week, he says something so out of line and out of touch. Yeah, he was telling me, uh, I'm, I'm like struggling for work right now, and he's mm. and he's like, yeah, that that sucks. And he goes, so I put in an offer to a house for seven hundred thousand dollars. They didn't mm. take it, so next week I'm going to put in nine hundred and fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> oh, oh, interesting. I was like, oh yeah, wow. <laughs> that's wow. That's that's wild. I had one of those with fucking Money Ryan. I was at his place the other day, and uh, and and. Um, I was, he was like, oh, what have you been up to? I was like, man, I've been really like unbearably sick. Yeah. Like I've been so fucking sick. Lucky I own a house. So I'm not evicted like <coughs> poor, home, poor renters as they deserve, but I'm like really sick and I've, I've not been doing well. I'm just trying to do whatever I can. And he goes, oh man, that sucks. Do you want to come to France next week? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. Actually, I would love to. He goes, oh, really? We're going to Croatia. And I said, oh, that sounds great. What's the catch? And he goes, oh, well, we'll book your tickets. I said, I can't come to <laughs> France and Croatia. I can barely afford to get angry in the Dangerfield store. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, you can support the show on Patreon if you want a, a bonus episode every single week and access to the Discord. It's like the group chat of homeowners where we laugh at poor people, but there's a lot of poor people in there. Um, and we kind of just talk about the episode and, and our book club. <laughs> um, I'll just say before we move on, mm. we recorded a episode last week, Patreon episode, and then I can't log in to the Patreon. We're going to sort that out today. So we just haven't uploaded it. Yeah, which, which means this week you get a special double whammy. Oh, or yeah. next week you get three. <laughs> yeah, depending <laughs> on how long we... We are recording them. So what, you know... Next year, you're going to have 50 episodes a week. <laughs> it's going to be really good. Um, 
yeah, I don't know. Episode 300 is coming up. I get, we'll do, we might do something. We'll see how, we'll, you know what? We'll see how well Modafinil works. If you see me two days from the, this episode coming out, organizing an arena tour, Modafinil's working too well. And, and I, and I, and someone needs to call my doctor to cancel my prescription. Um, <laughs> uh, all right. So what do we have here? I've got, uh, we have, uh, Let's do this quickly. We've got one article here that uh, that Keelan sent me. Um, now I realize I've I've been doing a lot of trashing Gen Z by reading articles, and I sound like a boomer. But I'm, I'm going to redeem myself here. I love this one. This is a headline: <clears throat> News.com.au trashing on Gen Z again, fucking dorks. Written by some millennial, of course. Uh, bed rotting is the new trend Gen Z is obsessed with. Gen Z have a brand new obsession. It's called bed rotting. And some youngsters are doing it for days on end. Uh, Keelan was like, I don't know if we should talk about this because it might sound like you're trashing Gen Z too much. I said, my entire last 18 months has been bed rotting. That's all I do now. I wake up and I go, I think I have breakfast. And then I go back to bed rot. Um, we all know that Gen Z are experts in self-care with the younger generation coming up with a new and improved way to help them decompress. Whether it's through trends like bare minimum Mondays or taking an everything shower, Gen Z know how important taking care of their mental well-being is, and they definitely aren't short on creative ways to do it. I don't know if it's working because every fucking Gen Z I see has anxiety and autism. Bed rotting <laughs> is the latest self-care trend and involves young people spending huge chunks of the day in bed, basically doing whatever activity they find the most relaxing. Yeah, that's depression. That's having depression. You, you either have what I have or you have depression or sometimes you have what I have, which is both. <laughs> um, a bed rot can last anywhere from a few hours, that's cool, to a whole weekend. That's depression. Depending on the level of rejuvenation required. Um, and then we've got a caption here from a TikTok. All I love is bed rot. I truly just want to rot in my bed all day with my stupid snack and baby sensory Bravo TV. It's not on my vision board, but if I'm honest, it's what I crave. You know what this is? This is uh, th this is what you get when when you fucking go. Hey, if you want if you want to buy a home, have you thought about having roommates? People, everyone, an entire generation of people go. Oh, okay. I shouldn't even try. Do you know how fucking impossible it was? Like, I shouldn't own this house. How hard it was for me to buy this house. I had to run a very successful business. I had to barely survive fucking COVID. I had to collect a bunch of government handouts that I was getting that no normal person was getting because I was a fucking sole trader, even though I technically could kind of work. And then I also had to fucking miraculously strike lucky with cryptocurrency. And I also had to have like fucking seven years of savings all at once. And then I only barely just, I think we, we won this house by like literally a thousand dollars. And then two months after we bought it, we couldn't afford it because the, the property market did what it did. So it was like the perfect storm aligned and I managed to get it. And now I'm like, just barely fucking holding on, trying not to lose it. There's no hope. If I was a normal person, I would have had to sell this house already because of the interest rates. It's so fucked. I don't know what young people are, or even people my age that aren't that young anymore are supposed to do. Just fucking sit there and listen to a podcast of a guy screaming about mastectomy scars while they rot in bed. Better than having a rotting pussy. I don't know. That's <laughs> gross. Sorry. Um, anyway, that's enough of that. Trans rights, guys. Um, I've got a... Uh, <laughs> Does that make it less less problematic if after you say something fucked, you go trans rights, guys? It's Pride Month. Whoops. Um <laughs> Oh, I'm so sick of Pride Month. All the fucking companies are going to be gayer than Dangerfield. It's so annoying. You know what I saw? I saw fucking some military contractor put up a pro post about gay pride. It's like, can you just focus on killing civilians, please? Do your job. 
Um, all right. So we have a great update. Miscellaneous bit at the end is the part where I answer uh, questions uh, sent in by listeners. Uh, if you want to send in a question, I'm, I'm in desperate need. I have none. Send it through the podcast at loosespears.com. That is lewspears.com. Podcast at loosespears.com. Now, you may remember... I don't, were you here for this, Keelan? Yeah, I was here. My ex lost her virginity to a dog. You may remember this uh, email that I read out a couple of episodes ago. Um, and uh, in this, uh, he addressed himself as Hound. Um, and he talked about how his girlfriend had a little tattoo near her privates of a dog paw. And he kept asking her about what it meant. And she was real touchy and really cagey about it. She wouldn't tell him what it meant. And then eventually after enough digging, he ends up finding out that it was like a, a, a zoophilia type thing where you get that tattoo if you fuck dogs. And that's how she lost her virginity. They're no longer together, right? So, oh, actually, I ended up finding that out. I Googled it. I don't think he knew about this. But anyway, he sent us a follow-up email. And he said, my ex is ruining my military career. Hey, Lewis, it's me again. A little bit of background first. My friends and I were only joking with the hound nickname, but I guess the story about my ex, uh, the podcast, uh, and, and the podcast has spread every, everywhere around... Uh, I guess the story spread about my ex from the podcast, and now everyone in my unit knows. Now even my own soldiers are calling me hound. <laughs> like Game of Thrones. Now, everyone in my unit is referring to me as Hound or the guy whose girlfriend fucks dogs. It was funny at first, but it's getting annoying. What should I do? Take him out back. If I'm coming up on the end of this, I'm coming up on the end of this contract and I don't know if I should stay in or if I should get out. I really want to stay, but if this starts to follow me, then I really don't want to. That's so awesome. That's what bothers him about war. Yeah, look, fucking killing people, that's fine getting bullied hurts my feelings it's not like it offends me oh, okay it's not like it offends me or anything i just don't want people to think that i like bestiality uh well you should hear what the enemy soldiers are saying about you <laughs> my old nickname was hatchet because i brought uh the hatchet a book i love on deployment i don't know what that is what's the hatchet i assume that's uh an army term i'm missing out on uh i because i brought the 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 Hatchet, a book I love on, on deployment, and pretty much every time we went into the field. Oh, the book is called The Hatchet. Um, can you Google... Survivalist book. Oh, okay. 13-year-old boy named Brian finds himself completely alone in the Canadian wilderness with only a hatchet as his tool. Could be worse. His girlfriend could have fucked dogs. <laughs> uh, but with, with this new nickname, it doesn't feel the same. It sounds like I'm either a fuck boy or I'm just a bad person and I don't want to go to a new unit with a bad nickname. I already have I already have 10 years in, so I don't know if I should stick. Is this guy going to quit his whole career because of this podcast? That's awesome. Uh, I already have 10 years in the military, so I don't know if I should stick with it or if I should just get out. What do you think? Anyway, you should come to America. I would love to see you live. Yeah, so you can put a live round in me. Uh, yeah, don't, I mean, don't quit. Or, or do quit. You know, if you're working for an industrial military complex, maybe do quit. Um, but... I don't know, man. I like Hound. I think that's a cool nickname. You got to embrace this shit, dude. That's 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 the real secret. Is is you shouldn't quit or not quit. You should embrace Hound. I think that's fucking cool. Hound is better than Hatchet. Oh, I don't know. Hatchet's pretty cool. I do like Hatchet, and Hatchet's about a book, whereas Hound's about your girlfriend fucking dogs. I like Hound. That's the Hound. And 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 when people go, see, here's the thing. Hatchet and Hound both sound cool, but the explanations behind them sound really lame. Like when I hear a guy is called in the in the military who's been there for 10 years, that's Hatchet. I'm thinking, man, he must have run out of ammo in a firefight and had to take out three men with a hatchet by himself just to rescue his wounded brothers in battle. And then I find out it's just about a book about a 13-year-old boy. Ooh, boring. But when I, when I hear Hound, I'm thinking, man, that must be a, a dude who fucking got lost on deployment, separated from his brothers in arms for months, managed to join a pack of wild dogs and train them to locate uh, 
people who are holding cameras that you managed to then lie in your report and say were guns and got them killed and then found your camp and reunited with your brothers. And then I find out it's actually just because his ex-girlfriend fucks dogs. I think that's cooler. <laughs> See, that's what you... You got to embrace it, man. And I kid, I kid. All right, I respect the military, trans rights. <laughs> um, I think that you got to embrace it, dude. I like Hound. I reckon that's cool. Hound, and it's a funny story. You're not with her anymore. It's your ex-girlfriend. Go, yeah, I know. How crazy is this? I had no idea. I think that's awesome. And Because here's the thing. You don't get to pick your nickname, all right? This, you know what I think? He kind of picked his first nickname. Hatchet, the book, he was his book. They started calling him his book. He's like, I love that book. All right, but you don't get to pick your nickname. There was always that one kid in high school that was like, can you guys call me this? Nah, brother, no way. I'm going to find out the most horrifyingly embarrassing moment in your life and I'm going to call you that, hound. I think you got to embrace it. All right, that's what you have to do. And I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very much for listening. That's the end of the podcast. If you want to continue listening, we've got an episode up on Patreon right now, or we've recorded it and, and it's sitting in the bank and it'll come out when, as soon as we figure this problem out. Uh, I'm Lewis Spears. Support the show on Patreon. Dear God, my mortgage is increasing by this every second. Uh, and uh, thank you very much. I'll talk to you next week. I hope you have a shit one. Episode 300 next week.